Everybody, it's Tyler here at Riverbots High School. Checking in 55286A, Maka Pacquiao. This was your over under champions last year. Congratulations on that at the world. It was so cool to talk to you then and see your incredible performance. And they're on a great run once again here in high six as well, too. Lots of great stuff we'll be talking about uh, with this awesome arm. We'll be showing as that gets brought up. But we're doing a full robot overview. A lot of great iterations been working on the last couple of weeks, too. So we can't wait to dive more into this awesome machine coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Jeff, we got to just break down this robot. I think, you know, one of the things that really brought me to this was this awesome arm that you have as well too. So let's talk about the arm first and we got a lot of other great stuff to break down here. I started design, this year design with Lady Brown traditionally and I decided it was too heavy and like tedious for other extra components such as tier 3 possibly in the future. So I decided to use this arm. It's fully personalized uh, using string as constraint on the bottom for it to hold still. It has flexible on each end to make the hook work and it also has this great alt, uh, like programming that allows it to score wall sticks with some minor adjustment if it's like off by an inch or two. And we also have the doing it right here and the lift is only uh, personalized and the hook is by itself so it's you know walks hook and when it's uh, down the intake is engaged right here when it's up the intake just like not working at all since the hook is the gear just step off each other and um, we have 48 on here we used to plan 30 36 however the structure didn't allow us so we decided to switch to 48 the thing gears really works well and the range just sits perfectly on top of the flex tool uh, and does not touch the gear at all. And for the uh, normal intake, we do have color sorting right here for the for the color sorting. It works really well, uh, nearly 100%, but sometimes it doesn't work due to uh, encoder issues and sometimes it's just misread. And 600 RPM really works well for us, even though we have these two extra shafts at the bottom that was engaging with the intake. And as I said, I mentioned before, intake, the intake does not work at all. And it's like free to move and the friction is pretty low. We are running fork as usual for the intake and we have these diamond shaped hooks so we can work it both way on the mogul and on the wall stake when lifted. These just help the ring to stay in place when it's lifted since it's so fast. Uh, the ring usually flies off without these. So then I want to ask you here, uh, you know, we're, as we're watching teams, you know, a lot of teams have gone to the Lady Brown meta, right? Yeah. For things. I actually love the whole uh, conveyor scoring that way. We saw a couple teams at Space City recently. They had incredible success with that as well. So for you, why'd you go this round instead of the Lady Brown? Like, what's your justification saying, like, this is the best choice for me? So personally, I've built three Lady Browns right now. Uh, one full rotational and two traditional, so half rotational. But we have some great D score and great wall play. However, the main issue with Lady Brown is the shape doesn't allow us to add anything in the near future. Such a tier three, we do have a tier three plan, but it's not on here yet since we run out of time. And also like plans for these ramps, it's really hard to adjust with the full rotation Lady Brown. And building another Lady Brown seems too much like work for a fourth Lady Brown in my season. So I just switched to a two bar. Uh, it's much lighter, the raw right, raw bar right now is only about six kg. Uh, usually Lady Brown is really hard to make it under 6kg and my robot is like not best structure yet so things can be optimized so it can be saving weight and like uh, less friction on special parts and like these can be replaced with plastic so we can definitely replace some weight and like for the tie 3 to work and for like skill stuff. These, if I replace these 5.5 to play them on the intake, we can actually do a great 2 ring hook uh, steel wrong, so we can put two rings at the same time rather than like Lady Brown, which can only do one. So do you do you envision, would you see, say that Lady Brown at some point, that meta might become exhausted and you're going to see more teams move away from Lady Brown as we get further in this game? I would say it really depends on the field quality and the competition, since this mechanism is heavily depending on how good the wall sticks are. If it's off by like a lot in a tournament, 
shape it might not work, but a lady brown usually works in like it's a claw shape. Uh, so if I mean if the crewman has a good quality, uh, good quality field, I would say with uh, uh, with the program I showed earlier, it will hit 100. percent I would say, and also skill runs will be much easier since you don't have to like do the arm lifting so many times. Very cool. Uh, anything else on this robot you want to highlight or talk about? Uh, mainly just drive train. I'm running 480 on 2.75 wheels. It's 77 watts, so it works great against every single raw, basically every single drive train. Uh, I can push the ball around for de-scoring their mogul goals or uh, pretending my wall stick. And the drive train I did add to 36 gears at here to make the thing long enough for the for my uh, two bar and also having space for the 5.5 to work uh, with the 6P sprocket. So uh, I know you mentioned tier three might be coming soon without getting into too much detail because I know you haven't you know, fully yeah. implemented yet. What are maybe some of the ideas you're thinking of in regards to tier three? We're thinking about uh, progressing on the working gremlin and also uh, possible corner houses. We really, got, we really want to get high stake. What we're thinking about is changing the geo of this two bar. So when it's like fully up in the air, it could using lifted, lifted like position for scoring on high six, so we could have like higher possibility of scoring that right then. Has to climb on this side and using that hook to score with the Lady Brown. And also, we were talking about uh, the Grimlin. So, one idea is like once lifted, once lifting, we could use the gear. That's just an idea, and we are still testing the stuff on the, our robot. Last thing I want to ask you is just you know once again on the World Championship. Congratulations on that, but like. You know, what is that experience like being in the Dome, winning World Championship? And then, you know, you have expectations for yourself. And then I think the community might have some expectations yeah. for you as well. Like, how do you manage all that as you go into a new season? So what I really just continue what I did last year is like progressing on like new ideas and testing out like different designs and seeing which is the best. I mean, I'm still testing this two bar uh, comparing to Lady Brown I did in the early season. Uh, it really depends on this competition, how it goes. So I will probably rebuild a full new robot for Super Rush. So, I mean, building a new robot really helps me to like get a better, like optimized structure, especially in these like complex designs. The geo kind of messed up like a lot when it's like, you only cut the side view since you don't have much time to like fully cut the robot. And for the programming, it just takes a lot of time and we are adding the odometry next robot since I'm getting the wheels so I can get them. And programming these, will be like a longer time, I would say, since first time using odometry, uh, using PID mostly in the past few years. And fitting their expectation is just like trying your best, I would say, like, yeah. Does, does that push you harder when you win a world championship? Is it about the same or does, does it really make a difference to you in general? Or is it, is it like, is it kind of like, hey, I want it, let's just get ready for the next season sort of thing? I would say uh, the passion is generally the same, mainly the skills inside. I learned a lot last season using school drawings and like, Cutting a lot of stuff, so this year robot is just like better structured overall. Well, Makabak Miao, thank you so much. Congratulations once again on your incredible performance uh, last year, but this year I'm sure great expectations for that. We can't wait to see how you do for that, and a lot of great things teams can learn from this. Even with new rebuilds coming, there's awesome stuff your team continues to do. So thanks, thanks a lot for taking the time, and good luck here uh, at Riverbots too. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you, and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply.